there, guys. My name is Andrew Toronto, and thank you so much for joining me on another AXS, ASXT video. So today I wanted to go over this company's earnings report uh, that they had on May 11th, uh, 2021. Uh, it was a long-awaited um, earnings report, and there's a lot to go over. Um, before I dive into that, I do want to talk a little bit about the stock price and the stock movement, mainly because I know a lot of you guys... Uh, don't even really come here specifically for the company and you're more invested in the stock and although yes We are value investors and honestly, I couldn't really I really don't care too much about <laughs> um, The stock price too much outside of hoping it goes down so I can buy more um, Which I'm now currently in a big buying phase guys big buying big buying um, I will uh, I will be buying uh, most likely all the way into probably early June, most likely. I mean, I'll be buying um, so long as this price stays under, I'd say, three to four dollars. I feel very comfortable buying. I, if it shoots up to three or four and starts consolidating again, I might consider buying around that uh, around that area. Um, uh, but or I'm sorry, not shoots up. But if it kind of slowly goes up to three or four, and I feel as though there's enough of a floor there. Um, then yeah, maybe I might buy there. But for right now, I think there's a great floor around this one, one dollar to two dollar mark. So I think that anywhere between this range is such a great buy. Um, obviously, something I want to talk about uh, right off the bat is ASXC's involvement in the tech sector. And when tech goes down, ASXC tends to go down. And we can kind of see just across the board, tech has kind of taken a beating. And uh, the question is going to be which companies are going to bounce back. And the companies that are going to bounce back are going to be companies that, A, didn't necessarily need the boom in the first place and also utilized it properly. And they made an offering with C.C. Wainwright when it hit about $3, and that was very, very fundamental towards their growth um, and towards their cash on hand. Uh, speaking of which, uh, their, cash on, uh, ca uh, their cash on hand is sitting at about 20, 24 runway, cash runway, so we're looking at um about three years of uh operating expenses to be to be completely uh, uh handled and obviously that that's not accounting for um new leases any uh uh predicted or unpredicted or unpredicted growth um which we do expect to, to to come so um so far right now 2024 i mean last time i was talking to you guys we said 2023 so you know we're adding years we're adding time onto the company's longevity and that really should help with investors in terms of dealing with the anxiety of it um now to hop into the earnings uh and just so you guys know like i said that it's uh key takeaways with the stock room before we go through and key takeaways is it's part of the tech sector so it's going to sell off with the tech sector and we want to be aware of that. We want to also understand that when that does happen, we have to figure out what companies are worth buying into this into this sell off. And and honestly, ASXC, if you are here, if you've been here since the beginning, you should know that this is definitely one of those you really do want to buy. And of course, it's unfortunate that something like this does happen. Uh, you know, I mean, if you, especially if you had a lot of short term money or you just wanted to make a quick buck, you know, I definitely understand that. But so far, so good. Um, doing really, really well here. So I think that, you know, nothing to be really too worried about in terms of the numbers. And now let's go into those. So if we go into uh, Seeking Alpha would be the best bet. Um, we can look at a couple things here. There's a couple other things I want to bring up, but they can kind of look at the numbers. So uh, essentially, I mean, they're talking about slightly fallen. They're going up right now. They're up 3%. Um, net loss narrowed year over year from 59 cents per share. But I mean, these are auto generated articles, I think, or it's very quickly made. Uh, net loss narrowed year over year from 59 cents per share to six cents per share, um, which is uh, definitely good. Definitely good. We'd like to see that um, net loss uh, getting smaller. Uh, the Q1 revenue was 2.1 million compared to 0.6 million the year year ago period. So obviously that's a huge boost into the quarterly. If we're looking year over year, we could see it went from half a million to 2.1 million, right? So that's that's a pretty substantial year over year change. Obviously it's Q1 and everybody was getting beat up by COVID. So um, you know definitely expecting some sort of loss there. Um, 1.3 million of that revenue is from the Senhan surgical system. 
um, which is really fantastic. And in Q1, more than 50, uh, 500 procedures were performed worldwide using Sunhands, which is a 3% year-over-year increase. Um, obviously, we want to see more procedures, and procedure volume is one of the most important things to um, kind of bring bring up in 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 uh, in, um, in talking about uh, a surgical system. You know, how often is it being used? Is pivotal for investors going forward, and that's something we really want to keep our eyes on. Um, but I'm definitely very, very bullish right now. I mean, I, I mean, after listening to this earnings call, I'm very, very excited about the company. Um, something that you're not going to see on the Seeking Alpha is they did have a buyout, um, and that was very, very good. Uh, they did have a buyout on their lease, and they leased it for about a year, and someone actually did end up buying out the uh, system. So. Um, that's a system that they'll have forever. They never have to get rid of it. That's theirs now. Um, and I also see a lot of other companies calling, following suit. And I think that we could expect maybe a, a couple more buyouts going forward. Um, uh, in terms of uh, F10, uh, 510X clearances, there were some really good uh, uh, clearances filed. Uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's a couple other highlights I, I kind of want to get into here. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, altogether, I think Anthony really uh, did did carry himself pretty well, and I know he's not the easiest person to listen to on these calls, but um, there's definitely a lot to kind of uh, talk about, and it could get a little boring if you're not too crazy into the surgical side of the world, and you know if you're not too crazy into medical science and whatnot. This could be a little bit of, like you might not understand what exactly it means to be approved for general surgeries. So you ever see uh, those hospitals that say like general hospital, whatever the case may be? Those are hospitals that they do, they do it all, you know, and that's really important that Senhan system is now able to do it all. And they're seeing uh, increased usage uh, in the U.S., the USA, um, year over year, uh, which is really something, you know, really something fantastic just because, uh, you know, the, 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 the U.S. is a great market. They're seeing increase in the Asian market as well. And Although Europe, uh, they do expect to see in improvements. They are fo still facing uh, COVID headwinds and whatnot. Uh, if I am talking too fast, I do apologize. I am just drinking a lot of caffeine. And plus, I have um, a lot to go through. Um, so we know that they, we know right off the bat, they signed the, uh, a couple agreements uh, with some new hospitals for the Sunhan Surgical System, which is really, impo which is really, uh, really good stuff. And uh, we're definitely excited to see more and more um, lease agreements. And also, uh, guys, something that's not uh, added into um, news cycles or doesn't really touch base with investors are these medical articles or these medical journals that are being posted on them, um, which actually does compare um, their competitor ISRG's Da Vinci head-to-head uh, -head on some gynecology, uh, gynecology surgeries. And you can see the cost per surgery is much lower with Sunhands and you're seeing a lot, a lot, a, a, a far greater improvement in terms of the the company's um, or a, a far greater edge uh, with the Senhan system uh, when you compare it apples to apples with the Da Vinci, uh, and not even to say that Da Vinci is bad, and I don't think that they're, you know they're going to run them out of business, uh, especially since I think the whole robotic surgery world is doing so well, and will continue to do really, really well. Um, for, for many, many decades, um, what really is going to, I, I mean, we're not even going to think 10 years down the line. Let's focus now. Um, what we really want to focus in on now is making sure that they do, they continue to hit these numbers, which they did this quarter, um, and their expectations continue to be met. I think consistent meeting of the expectations of investors will lead to greater and greater investments, and I think that money will be used very intelligently uh, with the uh, with the business model that they have, and I think that this uh, the system is definitely um, in, in going in the right direction. I mean, uh, I, I'm I'm having a very strong feeling right now that we're going to see a big reversal. Um, I would love for it to stay low, guys. I mean, no matter what, I would love for this to stay as low as possible for as long as possible. But eventually, your baby's going to have to grow up. That's just the case, and uh, I think um, I think it's about ready to go. Um, I mean, barring obviously another tech sell-off, uh, I I think that we we aren't going to have too many issues going forward. Um, obviously, you look at this graph and you get a little bit like, ah. Eh. But guys, remember where this where this where they where they started? Okay, they started at less than they were at forty cents 
maybe not even half a year ago. Okay, they were at 40 cents, now they're at $2. I mean, that's still a tremendous amount of growth. And then on top of that, they're continually growing and they're doing more and more great things. And we can really attribute, I think, this little dip in that, in that graph um, more or less to the tech sell-off. And I think what happened was that dip happened, right, kind of with the whole tech sell-off, and we're starting to see another floor emerging. Right, so it, it, it does it does seem to want to bounce back, and I think that we will see um, some decent growth. I mean, I would be looking to buy every dip you can here, um, up and until I would say about the six dollar mark, or once it starts hitting its highs again, I would say you know maybe pump the brakes a little bit and see where it wants to go, and um, you know maybe look at trimming some of your profits if you do have some at that point, which you should. Um, you know, uh, in terms of the best play to make, I would say the 5.5 calls, uh, 2023, uh, are looking really, really good buys right now. Um, what else? Uh, price target. Uh, I, I don't necessarily think it's going to hit the $20. I mean, I would love, I think it should be worth that by the end of the year, but, uh, or, or I think it could get there, but. I think it would be most likely if we're if we're gonna give a very honest price target at this point, um, that's not fueled by any amount of greed and just kind of all pulled in logic. Which I mean, we could admit that the video I made, uh, you know, a few months ago was definitely very greedy. I mean, things were going up and they didn't seem to be stopping. I mean, we could see what was happening. Um, so we kind of just assumed that that momentum would continue. And you know, unfortunately, the tech sell off happened. Um, well. Two sell-offs. There was an initial sell-off, which I think was just the fact that the company was growing so quickly, so fast. And then there was also the tech sell-off, which we're now in the midst of and which we're now ba uh, bouncing back from. But hopefully we get to see um, a greater increase in the in, in the price um, at this point um, for those who have been invested long term and are kind of bag holding. Um, but for those of you who are bag holding, remember, you can always average down and you know, whether that means, you know, kind of investing more money and thinking, you know, oh, I'm scared because I've already lost stuff, you know, really think about what you're buying and really look into the company. And guys are talking about, you know, the future of surgery here, which is really fantastic. And it's a great investment to make just even from a moral standpoint, because the money that you're putting down now is helping to save lives later, um, which is really, really fantastic. Um, so with that being said, guys, uh, I would say a price target excuse me, uh, that would be realistic for the end of the year. Um, I'd probably say about five, five to five to ten dollars. Uh, sorry, my phone rang. Uh, I'd say about five to ten dollars would be a pretty realistic, uh, price target anywhere between there. I would say ten dollars being the, uh, the high now. I, I would trim it by, by half at least. Um, and sort of let that be, let that be the idea. And I think that's not a, a, an awful idea. I mean, it, it's, definitely going to be difficult i think for the for the company to kind of uh continue its momentum uh from a from a price standpoint with that history on the side with that slam down um but i mean look at doge look at all these other things i mean one thing starts going up it doesn't really matter people will buy so the hype will be there it's just a matter of whether or not it can get that traction i mean we saw some pretty big days pretty big 30 percent days um, and now I think we're kind of getting right back onto that track where we're going to start touching the twos and we might start approaching the threes come, uh, maybe late June. And I think, uh, into the Q2 earnings, we're going to see some really, really fundamental, uh, 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 good things with the price. I've predicted to be at about three to $4, um, come August, uh, barring no crazy market sell off, um, which is always possible at this point. So that's why like, I said, I mean, the company is doing great, no problems, nothing report on the company. So to be honest with you, it's it's always a good buy. If you're looking for like the best price and you can take a second, you got to have everything right, then sure, you know, look into the numbers and look into like all of the various trends and stuff like that. But honestly, in 10 years, no matter really what price you buy this at, I, I, I think you're going to make money. If you were to buy even within the next few weeks, within the next month, I don't think it's going to hit a price in the next month that it's not going to be able to beat in the next year. So honestly, even if you do end up making a buy and it starts going down, uh, I think you're going to be clear to set. And I, and that goes to all the people who made buys in February and March as it was tumbling down and not sure where that floor was. Um, let's remember, guys, that 
you know, these earnings, you know, they, they, they usually end up as a very good kind of rock towards a decent momentum. And I think we have a little bit of time. I think it might kind of balance out a little bit, right? Hopefully. Um, maybe a little bit of a sell-off if tech sells off later this week. But other, other than that, uh, I, I do uh, have a very good feeling that we're going to see some, some improved growth um, over the next few months. Um, and uh, I'm definitely excited to get involved in that. Um, so definitely a buy right now. Strong buy, in my opinion. Um, I, I would, I would, I would, I'm, I'm buying. <laughs> so that's all I can really say is that I'm definitely buying. Um, but like I said, I definitely am going to be hesitant buying anything above $4 um, just because of how the graphs work and knowing that um, I might be able to get a better price and just wait for a tech sell off or something to kind of happen in the tech sector and just sort of pounce back into ASXE. So I think buy on the red guy, sell on the green. So if you can if you can get that on the on a red day, you get it down nine percent, down ten percent, then it's below three dollars. I really don't see a reason not to buy. Um, so you know, I would say just buy it on that red and uh, just just hold, just hold, just hold on to it, and good things I think will happen. Um, I mean, if not today, you know, just hold on to it, forget about it, go do other stuff, keep buying whatever you got to do. Uh, but I think it's going to be really, really great stuff in the next coming uh, few years. So um, doing really great stuff. If you have any questions, obviously, please join the Discord. Um, tons of really great information there. And by the way, a lot of the information that's shared there is information you don't even see on this news thing. You don't hear about it. Um, people are scouring the web for information on ASXE. So it's really, really a great resource for me. Honestly, I go on there and I, and I find things out. And I'm always looking. So it's a great place if you're looking for that real up-to-date information on everything um, and kind of get to talk some stocks with a bunch of other people who love doing that. So um, with that being said, guys, thank you so much for waiting around for the video. Um, my next video, not sure when it's going to be. I uh, don't really have anything too crazy planned about it. I do love informing you guys. Uh, but, you know, like I said, there's got to be stuff to inform you on. Um, I might break down some stock advice, but... Honestly, I think it comes off a little um, a little weird. I mean, considering I'm not super successful in stocks as of just yet, you know, I'm not filthy rich. So I think it's a little weird to start giving out advice, you know, without being able to back it up. So I think, you know, I make a lot of money and maybe I start creating some, you know, some, some verifiable advice and stuff like that. Um, but with that being said, guys, um, have a great rest of your day. Really great earnings. It was a beat. Super excited. Uh, and I hope you have a great night.